for joining us today for our fifth Healthy Oceans, Healthy Minds talk. I can't believe that we're over halfway through. Um, it's been <laughs> really, really brilliant. A um, couple of sessions that we've had um, with loads of people all immersed in nature and health and sustainability. Um, so thank you for joining us um, this afternoon. Uh, I'm Karina and I'm Projects and Events Officer at Keep Northern Ireland Beautiful. Yeah, and I'm Nicola. I'm the Community Development Officer at Keep Northern Ireland Beautiful. And me and Karina both work together in the Live Here, Love Here team. Thanks, Nicola. Yeah, so firstly, I'd like to say a massive thank you to our funders, Ocean Conservancy. Um, I got it right that time. <laughs> got it right that time. They are the national coordinators. Um, we're the national coordinators, sorry, for them here in Northern Ireland. Um, and they're an international conservation body. Um, We'll stick a bit more about them in the chat later on so you can find out a bit more about them as well. So we're delighted you're able to join us um, this afternoon um, for the series of talks called In at the Deep End. Well, we're hearing for, from some wonderful people all immersed in health, resilience, communities, sustainability, um, and all connected by their love of the outdoors and the impact it has on them and ultimately their mental health as well. Yeah, so through the campaign, um, we want to reconnect people with um, to our seas and our waterways and our outdoor spaces and to show the impact that um, like a healthy marine environment can have on our health and well-being and help create a society that values the outdoors and the benefits that it can bring. So um, we're all becoming more aware of the impact um, that the choices that we make with the goods that we, we purchase can have on the environment. So in the next couple of sessions, we're going to be exploring that further. So as Karina has said, this is our fifth session, um, but that no way means that we are professional at this. Um, we're still very much finding our feet. And we hope that you find this um, session valuable and worthwhile. And if not that, we hope you find it entertaining. So we do have a few um, like Zoom rules that we just need to cover before um, we get into the session. So we, would, we will be recording this, but we do have it set up that it will record on speaker view. So that means only the person that is speaking at that time um, will be recorded on camera. But um, if you don't want um, like to take that risk or if you really don't want to have any risk of yourself appearing on camera, you can just turn your camera off. Um, then feel free to chat or ask any questions as they come up throughout um, at using the chat function. And then we will do like a more interactive kind of conversation style Q&A at the end. So this is definitely where we would like if you want to you to turn on your camera, interact with the speakers directly or else um, we can like just like field any questions that have come in through the chat um, as we, we move through. So, yep, I think that's that's everything covered. Thanks, Nicola. Yeah, so this week um, for our two talks, we are talking about plastic pollution solutions and we're talking about all different ways you can pre protect your the oceans and waterways from home. Um, we all know that everything we do impacts the world around us and sometimes that can often trigger eco-anxiety um, as we try to do everything or we don't really know where to start as well. Um, so in today's session, we are exploring the idea of plastic free parenting and I don't say that lightly because obviously plastic is a good thing um, but it's more reduced in your single use and that sort of thing as well so it's how to cut down in your plastic waste because it's not everybody doing it perfectly it's trying to get everyone to do something um, and one of the main ways you can do that is by cutting down on your use of disposable nappies so we'd like to welcome Kathy and Laura this afternoon who are going to chat to us about their journey with reusable nappies and uh, how to use them the benefits, overcoming the tricky bits, um, busting some of the myths as well, and best places to buy or rent, and some of the other swaps that they've done um, along their journey as well. So, Kathy, Laura, welcome. Um, really lovely to have you with us. So, thank you very much. Um, so, can you tell us a little bit more about yourselves? And, Laura, do you want to go first? Yeah, thanks, Karina. Thanks for having us here. Um, my name is Laura and I am 29, I live in Bangor, um, I'm married to Craig, I have two kids, one is Rosa, she's three, and Saul is one, he's, yeah, he's one. Um, I used to be a midwife and I left that in 2018 to be a stay-at-home mum um, and then Saul came along and then I also own and run a baby of mine, Reusable Mappy Shop, which is run out of my home here and um, and that's sort of 
me in a nutshell. Thanks, Laura. And um, Kathy? Yes, hi. Um, so I'm Kathy. I actually work with Karina and Nicola in Keep Northern Ireland Beautiful. Um, I am mummy to Amelia, who is nearly one and a half now. Um, so I was due back um, after maternity leave in July, but obviously COVID happened. So I'm on an extended career break at the minute. Um, so obviously working at Keep Northern Ireland Beautiful, uh, plastic has been on my mind for a long time. And when Amelia came along, um, yeah, nappies were a big thing for me to sort of tackle, but I'm gonna hopefully go through a couple of other areas that I've tried to make some swaps. Um, so we'll see if there's anything useful in there for you. <laughs> Excellent, thank you so much, Kathy. Um, well, that kind of like, you know, leads us really into um, our first question. So both um, Kathy and Laura, could you tell us about how your journey into reuse, reusable nappies um, began? Um, Kathy, do you want to go first? Okay, um, so as I said, obviously I work with you guys um, and I think like pretty much most people, I've been trying to cut down on different types of single use. So all the obvious things of, you know, taking your bags with you to the shops, reusable cups, um, and then started looking at other areas. So a big one for me was reusable period products. And I made the switch to cloth pads and the difference in comfort and absorption and everything was just amazing my mind was blown and I was like right there's no way I'm ever going back to horrible plasticky pads um and then whenever I found out I was pregnant I was like right if I don't want to wear plasticky things in my pants why would I do that to my baby who is newborn pristine skin untouched by anything um so I spent a lot of my pregnancy researching cloth nappies I didn't really know anybody who'd used them um I told my mum and she laughed and went, huh, I tried that with you. Um, I've still got the clothes pins. I lasted a couple of weeks, if that. And I thought, right, no, things have changed. They've bound to have changed in 30 years. So yeah, I just looked into it, um, did a lot of research and looked at all the different options. Um, how much detail do you want me to go into at this stage? <laughs> No, I think that's great. You might be giving away too much of our conversation yeah. later on. Um, <laughs> thank you, Kathy. It's that's really great. And Laura, like, do you want to give us a bit of detail about how you get into it as well? Yeah. Um. So I'm actually pretty new to uh, the whole reusables and um, cloth nappies, which is surprising because I own a shop. But I um started because at the start of lockdown in March, I couldn't get any disposable. Um, nappies in the right size so a couple of friends who already used cloth nappies and they were like well we'll lend you these if you need them you know and I thought right okay so I borrowed a couple um, and was like these are actually pretty cool I like that they're different colors you know they look nice like I'm not a massive I wasn't a massive eco person before so it was purely just based out of necessity um, and yeah again, I fell in love with them I love you know just how they, he seems so much happier in them and I love that I wasn't making a massive mess on the planet left behind me like I guess it's a good feel good factor out of it um, and then it, it kind of becomes a wee bit addictive because you're like oh this is a nice one oh this is a nice one I'll get that one I'll get that one and then I got a bit sad when I thought about I used to be a midwife and I never ever saw one baby with a cloth nappy on in my whole career and I thought why is this not more normal so that's when then the shop appeared and I decided I can help here. I can try and make this more normal um, and more mainstream. So I opened up the shop and um, as I said, run, I run out of my house and allow people to collect if they want. So like Northern Ireland's not massive for having cloth nappies. The community is quite small here, but I'd love to see that through. And then I obviously do ship as well other places. So I'm trying to help get less waste in the landfill through um, the shop as well. Brilliant, thanks Laura. So um, you guys obviously love them and it sounds like one of the things that you love most about them is the designs, but I'll let you guys talk about that more um, yourself, yourselves. But 
Um, what is the one, like some of the things that you enjoy most about using reusables? And Kathy, I'll go, you go first. What have you got? <laughs> um, yeah, okay, so they look super cute. Um, I have two of my favorite ones with me just to show you. Um, I love dinosaurs and these are rainbow dinosaurs. So it's super cute. There's bright colors. They are soft. They are flexible. Um, so yeah, I mean, aesthetically, they're a lot nicer. For me, the big thing was always going to be not filling a bin full of plastic. Um, so yeah, there's, you know, that sort of gentle smugness you get when you're like, I'm doing something that I enjoy and it's also really good. I get that with nappies. Um, you know, we use disposables for the first week, 10 days and haven't since, and she says she's 16 months old now. So I love that I'm not filling the world with more unnecessary plastic that takes longer to create than is on the bum. Um, I love how open it makes conversations. I will talk to anyone about nappies. Um, it's kind of made me more confident. I feel more connected with her. I just love them, yeah. <laughs> Complete zealot. <laughs> Let me convert you. <laughs> Laura, do you want to tell us a bit more about um, why you love them? Yeah, sure. Um, can I just say, Kathy, I have that dinosaur nappy and I think that's from like, the girl who makes them in Northern Ireland in Craig Avon, is it? Yeah, she yes, has it's them, so, tweet, yeah. Yeah, yeah. I'm so you poor, yeah. It's it's a lovely nappy. Um yes, sorry. So um what I enjoy most, um, as I said before, I sort of get like a real good feel good factor, like I'm saving, helping save the planet. And I know that's a bit a bit maybe, I don't know. I I, don't, I just I love I love the feeling of doing it. And then um I suppose for me being in previously in healthcare, I know like um, how bad chemicals can be on your skin and stuff like that so it takes something like 15 seconds to get from um, your skin into your bloodstream and I know that disposables have quite a lot of chemicals in them to keep the moisture back so um, and as Kathy says you know babies have fresh new skin you know you don't want to be putting anything near them that could harm them so I'm not and I'm not saying like that they're harmful but I just know that um there's nothing in my nappies it's just cloth so I like that as well um and then there is a huge cloth community online um that I have managed to network into particularly on Instagram and there's loads of Facebook groups as well so I've actually made like long friends through doing cloth nappies which I never thought I would um so that's been a real bonus for me that is that is lovely um so it, it seems like, you know, you're really enjoying your journey into the reusables so far, but um, have there been any obstacles that you've had to like overcome along the way? Um, let's go Kathy first. I think this is our order. Kathy first, Laura second. Kathy first. Um, obstacles. Uh, at the start, to be honest, I was overwhelmed. Um, if you start looking into reusable nappies, there's several different types. But whenever you're looking at it and you know nothing about them, it seems like there's, oh my God, there's all these different ways of doing it. What goes with what? How do I do this? There's different types of fabric. There's there's just so much. And I did get overwhelmed. Um, so what I find really useful for that, um, I hired a kit actually from the Northern Ireland Nappy Library. I've got a link for that later I'll share. Um, and they have these pre-made kits that you hire for, I think it was four weeks at the time. Um, and they have most different types of nappy and you take it away and you try it and you try them all out and you see what suits you. Because every baby is different, every parent is different, different combinations are gonna suit different people. I need to go, okay, this is fine. I can just work my way through it. There's no mad rush, you know, and remembering it doesn't have to be all or nothing. I think I got overwhelmed and was like, I'm going to do this. I have to do it perfectly from day one. And actually you don't, you can just do it one at a time and just see what works for you. And just 
talk to people. Laura has already said there's an amazing community. There's different Facebook groups out there. If you know, just ask questions. There's always somebody. There's no such thing as a stupid question. Um, somebody, if you've thought of it, somebody else has asked it. So just ask. Yeah, that's probably my biggest one. Just overwhelmed. So asking questions is the best thing you could do. Yeah, I would have to probably say mine actually was pretty similar to that. Um, I remember like at two o'clock in the morning on the on my phone looking at the different options, going, "What if I pick the wrong one? I'm spending so much money on this." But I think I think um, the key for me was just to buy one or two or do a trial. Actually, the best thing, but I don't know if they're doing it with COVID at the minute. But um, buying one or two to not get a whole stash of all this one napping because you don't want it because I found then I had ended up changing and um, but that's the thing like you can sell them and um, if you do buy and you don't get on with them like it's a big pre-loved market and um, which also helps to make them a bit cheaper for you too but yeah so finding out what works is probably the toughest thing and um, I personally quite enjoyed looking at videos of people going through like doing a review of each nappy so I find that really really helpful um, and they show you how it works and things. Um, uh, but yeah, so yeah, it's, it's probably the same obstacle, to be honest. I would say some some other obstacles could be just people thinking like, you know, it's so much work and things like that, but we'll get on to that a wee bit later. I, I don't think it is. I actually really enjoy it. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, Laura. Um, yeah, you guys, you guys sound like you've had obstacles when you start out, but you've managed, there are so many resources and stuff out there to be able to overcome them. So, and it sounds like you're well on your way to the journey. Um, what's sort of been the reaction of your friends and family whenever you've said that you want to use ego nappies? Kathy, it might have been because your mom was using before, obviously you said a little bit about what her reaction was. Um, and you were sort of, you're sort of in the ego community, so you maybe we didn't have quite the reaction that other people would have, but Laura, you've maybe had a different, different reaction. And I'd actually just say that, although even working in Keep Northern Iron Beautiful, I told a colleague at the time that I was going to use them. And he had just had a wee boy a year or two before. And he was like, right, yeah, we thought about it, but no, there's too much work. We just, no, 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 there's too much going on. Um, so yeah, even in the sort of eco-minded community, it's still one of those things that people think, no, oh, it's too hard, it's too much work involved. Um, but once I started telling people a wee bit more detail about it, I haven't had a single negative comment about it. Most people are really interested. A lot of people haven't seen them. And if you talk about them, they do think it's a towel head held together with a safety pin. So whenever you start showing them the nice patterns, how easy it is, all the bags and stuff, they're on board. And I've actually converted um, three, maybe four people onto cloth nappies, one of whom is now actually a brand rep for Laura's shop. So, yeah, talking about it really does help. Sorry, over to Laura. Yeah, um... So, like, I think the first thing was people would go, oh, my washing machine, my washing machine's never off anyway. It'll never, ever be off if I do cloth nappies or, like, I can deal with the poo, that's disgusting, you know, stuff like that. Um, for a start, I wash my nappies once a week, maybe twice, because I have so many now. <laughs> I don't have to wash them that often, but you can wash them, you know, every two, three days. Um, so that's not the case that you're always washing um, with regards to um, the poo and the touching a wet nappy yeah you do have to do it like it's not it's not that it's not there but after after the first or second time doing it you do get used to it and you know pre-weaned poo can go straight into the machine believe it or not um, which people can't believe but you just make sure you do a clean cycle on your washing machine once a month you'll be fine and then other than that you know um you just plop it into the toilet like or you can use um disposable liners and they just lift out and it plops into the toilet or well they plop into the toilet and then that goes in the bin um but yeah so um obstacles is definitely people thinking um they might have worked with it 
But I have to say, Kathy, you were saying people think of them being terry towels and, and safety pins. I showed one to my 94 year old granny and she was the most supportive I like out of all my family she was the one that was supportive she was like this is amazing look at this I've never seen anything like this because obviously they were terry tiles at the bit very basic you know at the age she is so she thought they were great and she was she she I think she would have wore one herself if she could have <laughs> but um yeah so um there you will get the odd comment and people think you're crazy and whatever but Honestly, it's the best thing I've ever done. That's great. So like that's it. Um, turning crazy thoughts into support. That's brilliant. Like families, like they get on board whenever you're on board and passionate. Um, so with with nappies, there's obviously lots of like, you know, myths and kind of thoughts that strong thoughts that people have. So what would be the the most common myth that you would want to debunk about um cloth nappies? Let's go, Kathy. <laughs> okay. Um, one that so it's not actually one that I've heard directly, but I see all all the time online is that oh, they're so bulky, they're holding back my baby, you know, they're not developing, she can't sit on her own or crawl or walk, or whatever. Um, like what do these people think happened before disposables were invented 30 years ago, 40 years, whenever it was, you know. Um, no, absolute nonsense. Actually they're better for, Laura, you probably know this in more detail as a midwife, but um, the bulk of them is actually good for their hip positions. Um, and if, is it hip dysplasia? That's, Laura, is that right? Yeah. Um, if a baby has that, they're actually recommended to like wear two disposables to bulk it up. So the cloth nappy is actually holding the hips in the right position for the development. So. For all the people that are like, oh, you can't cr learn to crawl and learn to walk. Absolute nonsense. My daughter was sitting at six months, crawled at nine months, was walking at a year. Um, okay, that's not the fastest, but it's by no means slow development. Um, so yeah, I think that's quite a big one, but it's not one that I personally had. There's loads of myths. Yeah, it's annoying. <laughs> Yeah, um, there are so many myths, and I suppose those could be questions maybe that come up later on. Um, but one of the ones I've heard of, um, I and actually I think my mom had mentioned it, you know, they're sitting in that wet nappy for ages, do they not get nappy rash? But it's actually, they're no more likely to get nappy rash than if they're in a disposable. What causes nappy rash is sitting too long in pee or poo regardless. So you're going to be changing your nappy regularly anyway. Um, and the thing with the cloth nappy, you can use, you can get ones that are stay dry so they don't feel wet to touch anyway, or you can get ones with liners and that keeps them dry. Um, so there's absolutely no reason for people to say that. Um, and if anything, as I said before, they're better for skin. So I think you're actually less likely to get nappy rash with them. Um, and because you are changing them maybe slightly more regularly, I don't know, but we're like, obviously we do, have nappies overnight and Saul has never ever had any kind of a red bum other than if he's pooed and I haven't realized and then I've not changed it but that would happen in a disposable because I did use disposables for my first child and she definitely got a red bum far more often than Saul did. Now that's anecdotal evidence it's not scientific but I can personally say they do not cause more nappy rash and I know a lot of the cloth community would agree so don't let that be putting you off. Thanks guys. So there are, there seem to be like a big community of people who either are starting out or aren't sure about it or have like myths that you guys have talked about or sort of aversions to it. Um, what's the one thing that you guys would have want, wish you knew before you started? Kathy? Um. I don't know. I did a lot of research. <laughs> um, I think just don't be scared of leaks is quite a big one. Um, reusable nappies are, you know, they're not infallible. You will occasionally get leaks, but with disposable nappies, you get a lot of leaks. We've only had one up the back poo explosion, and that was in a disposable. 
um, you're laughing. You don't have a kid yet, <laughs> Karina, so you haven't experienced it. <laughs> um, it happens, but yeah, I think just don't be scared of making mistakes. You know, it's it's not the end of the world if if a baby girl gets wet or something. If something isn't working, just tweak it. Just try something else. Um, yeah. I said I did a lot of research beforehand and I spoke to a lot of people and I asked a lot of questions and that I think removed quite a few obstacles for me. Yeah, like I think um, personally, if I had known what help was out there and what community was out there, any question you have, someone has been there and had that question before. So if I'd have known that, I didn't think I would have been as scared to do it. Um, also, like, I guess for me, as I've said before, I find it really fun. <laughs> I'm like, I don't like washing. I don't, I don't iron. I tum I do tumble dry quite a lot because it means clothes aren't wrinkly. Like I am, I'm not the best when it comes to that. But when it comes to nappies, I love hanging them out and getting just seeing them on a wee row and just looking at how pretty they all are and yeah it just brings me joy have you only done that Marie Kondo thing does it spark joy nappy spark joy for me so um I yeah it's I regret like I wish I totally wish I had done it with Rosa and um, and actually funny story my friend started doing it when Rosa was about a year and a half and I was like what are you doing cloth nappies you are crazy like I think I called her crazy to your face and then why like for a year and a half and she's laughing at me going and you know I own a nappy shop and you said I was crazy and you know it just never crossed my mind because it wasn't normal it wasn't a normal thing so um yeah I just wish I wish I'd known about cloth nappy sooner to be honest that these st still existed I assume they didn't even exist like that's how naive I was about it all so um yeah hopefully we can get the word out there they're good Jump in just for a second, Laura, you saying about them giving you joy. Can I share a wee photo that I have, um, which makes me so happy? Let me see if I can do this. Right. Can you see those pictures? Yeah. Yeah. So those are my nappies drying. I love nothing more in the summer than seeing on the left there a, a line full of nappies drying. And that's might be sad but I love it it's great and obviously now is not exactly lovely outside so I have this new line in the utility room this pole with my sock pusses and my nappies hanging up and I find it really zen it's like my 10 minutes of just a nice wee mindless task of just hanging them up I have a wee system I'm a little bit OCD about it husband's hand gets smacked away no I want to hang the nappies up but I really it does actually bring me joy and then stuffing the nappies again it's just 10 minutes of just a, a nice repetitive task just get to see the nice patterns yeah That's just thought I'd share that <laughs> I think that that really leads us on nicely to our next kind of like question so I, I, we were just going to ask um do you want to talk us a wee bit about the process um and um if, if you have any anything there to show like um yeah we'd, we'd love to like see about like you know the different process and what goes into it okay doc i actually have photos of that as well um so everyone's process will be a little bit different um again I've said the word tweak a lot, but you find your own groove on what works for you. Um, so these are a couple of photos of my system. So um, number five, I'll do this all out of order now. <laughs> number five is my nappy storage in the bathroom. So we change all her nappies in the bathroom so we can plop the poo straight down the loo. So I stuff them all and they're sitting ready to go. Um, number two in the bottom left corner, you can see is me stuffing them in the morning in my jammies with my cup of tea um, and we wash them every we're, at, we're every three days now so we used to be every two days we got a bigger machine so we needed to have more nappies in it um, we can talk about sort of the process of um, like the details of washing later if you want the details um, but yeah essentially the nappy comes off it goes into one of those wet bags in photos three or four 
and they're stored in that. You don't need to soak them. You might have heard of people have like say um, before you, have, you need like a big bucket full of um, like water to soak them and stuff. You don't do that anymore. Put them in the bag or in a tub and then the, the benefit of the bag, you just fire it straight into the washing machine. So I don't need to go through it. I don't need to handle them all again and pull out inserts and this that, and the other. Literally fire it into the machine, um, get your settings right, and then leave it to run and then hang them up to dry. Um, number one, photo one there are my wipes. They're my cheeky wipes. Other brands are available. Um, but essentially they're my reusable wipes. So instead of baby wipes, because again, it's a single use plastic. Um, the thought of using a normal baby wipe actually makes me cringe now. Just they're so flimsy and sort of slimy feeling. Um, the reusable wipes are amazing. You just wet them. They're really grippy. You can use them on hands, on faces. Whenever I'm out and about, I have a wee wet bag. So I just damp, dampen a couple, put them in that, bring it out. And then if you're out and about and you need to change a nappy, I have a larger wet bag. So it's kind of like the, the one, the blue one in the picture. It's got two zippy bits. You keep clean ones in one bit, dirty ones in the other, zip it up. It keeps all the smells in and then you just tip them in when you get home. And that's kind of it. You know, you'll find your own groove, um, but it is a lot more simple than, than it sort of seems like it should be. It seems like it should be really complicated, but once once you've got what works, that's it. Yeah. How do I stop sharing? <laughs> stop sharing. Don't worry. That, that, that's really good. It's kind of like showed us, how, well, for me, like I, I, I've been, friends with Kathy so we know like I'm aware of Kathy's journey in reusables but haven't actually seen the the pictures and the all the different stages so thanks for sharing that um Laura like would you have anything to to add like um what about um your process or even would you even have any of the nappies there to like show what they're like yeah um so other than my process pretty much same as Kathy's other than instead of the bag I just use buckets with holes that I drilled in them um just because that's what I had so I did that um but yeah you know as she says you don't have to put them in liquids or anything so that's handy um so I have a nappy here this is um a birth to potty nappy so that means it's um supposed to fit most kids and um, they tend to start around eight to ten pounds so if you have a very small baby or at well, an average size newborn I suppose it's probably six or seven pounds you may not get into this until sort of eight weeks or more um but uh yeah so it has all the different settings at the front there's like rise poppers there that you can make it smaller so you can get it like right down to this size and then these poppers come across now i i have poppers on this but you can get ones that are velcro and some people prefer that it's more like a disposable a velcro one and um, and then inside this is um an all-in-one nappy so you just it's the most kind of like a disposable in the sense that it literally just goes on clear it all up and then it comes off the whole thing goes into the wash there's no bits and pieces so um i when i was starting i found that i was like right okay i've done disposables before what will be the most simple transition for me but there's so many different types as kathy says you know like you still can get terry towels and they're not really pinned anymore they're put together with a wee Called a nappy nipper, but um, like that's way more cost effective um, and a cheaper version for people that are on a budget. You know, you don't have, and that also is good for nighttime, so you don't have to spend loads and loads of money. And there's also cheap all in ones, you don't have to buy the 30 pound brand one. Like, there's so many different types, and um, yeah, like, so that there is, I think, what's in this one is microfiber, and um, so that's really fast absorbing. Um, and then the back is like the PUL, so it's it's the it's not waterproof, it's water resistant, so it stops um, the nappy from leaking. I have a kid's toy going off in the background. I don't know if you can hear that. <laughs> There's no children here, so I don't know why that's happening. Um, so yeah, is there anything about that you need me to show you again or more, or is that okay? I have a 
couple of different types here as well, yeah, if anybody wants to see them. Like. Yeah, um, sure, if anybody, if you want to put into the chat there, if you guys want Kathy and Laura to go over a few, few other demos whenever we're going through our Q&A session, um, just let us know and we'll come back to it. Um, so you guys obviously, nappies were the, one of the biggest things for your for your swaps um, as sort of an eco parent. Um, could you tell us a little bit more about how this swap has sort of made you think about other swaps? And Kathy, you you probably were doing swaps already, um, and then you naturally just progressed to the dis disposables. But Laura, you've maybe gone the opposite way. Do you guys want to tell us a bit more about that? And Kathy, we'll go to you first again. Okay. Um, yeah, so I had already made a lot of swaps, as you sort of mentioned. So um, I have some photographs again. Give me one more second. I'll see if I can find them. <laughs> um, okay. I, 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 sorry, I'm so bad with Zoom. Uh, this is because I haven't been in work. This is this is why. Okay. So um, here are some of my swaps I've done. Those are sort of parenty related. Um, so photo one uh, is obviously reusable tubs and boxes and things like that. Yes, they are plastic. As Karina said, plastic is still useful. Um, I am trying to reduce my single use plastic. Um, when these boxes eventually crack or break or the lid goes, then I might replace them with glass um, just to remove the chemical aspect as well. But for now, I've got loads of those. Um, old jars and things are great. Whenever I'm making any food, I would tend to batch cook and then freeze little individual portions for Amelia. Um, so I would freeze them in jars and things. Um, photo two is not particularly parenty. It's just some more swaps. So uh, bars of soap instead of um, like hand jelly stuff. Um, shampoo bar and my safety razor. Love a safety razor. If you haven't tried it, give it a go. It's so much nicer than a disposable razor. Um, I sound so evangelical. I'm so sorry. <laughs> uh, skip to quest, uh, photo five there. Um, and that's some of my reusable period products. I saw a post yesterday that said not to call it sanitary wear because that makes it sound like periods are dirty, like sanitary and so uh, period products. Um, and I say that's kind of what started me thinking about nappies um, just for my own comfort. They are so much more comfortable, but there's loads of options out there. Um, period pants, I haven't tried, but really want to, but I'm trying to not buy them because of the whole, I don't need them. I just want them. So I'm trying to be more um, considerate about not just buying eco things because they're new or cool. And I think that's a big thing. There's this general sort of greenwashing of, oh, I'm gonna be really eco. I need a glass bottle and a metal tin. And you're like, yeah, those things are good, but use what you've got first, like Laura with your buckets that you already had and you drilled holes in. Excellent, that's perfect. Um, toys and things, right? This is kind of a big one for me. Um, I didn't want and don't want Amelia to have loads of plastic baby tat. You know all the, the plastic baby tat you get in shops? Um, so a lot of what I've bought her has come sec second hand. Pre-loved is just a nicer term for it. Um, so in photo three, the big dinosaur rocker, I got second hand off Facebook Marketplace for I think it was 10 or 15 pounds instead of 60 pounds new. I give it a quick steam and it's good as new and she loves it. She doesn't know, but it's second hand. Um, again, photo four, that big cube thing. I think they're about 60 or 70 quid new. That was a tenner off Facebook Marketplace. And there's you know, they're pristine. They're they're not used long enough particularly to get damaged or worn or anything. And rather than going out and buying new, this has given it another chance, another life, if you will. Um, and then a lot of her other toys are wooden. Um, Nicola, you might spy your carrots at the bottom there that were a birthday present. She loves these wooden carrot sorters. 
but she does have some plastic you can see in photo four there is a plastic toy but it was second hand it came in a different bundle so you know it's I, I don't ban plastic from the house entirely it's just trying to be thoughtful about where you're getting it from how much use is it actually going to have um another really good example that isn't in that photo is you know the jumperoos you put them in and they bounce and bounce and bounce um somebody in work had one she used it for her two kids she lent it to her brother who used it for his two kids he passed it back to her and she passed it to me i passed it on to a friend who has passed it on to another friend so that's one plasticky jumperoo that has done seven different kids from five families and it's still going and okay yes it's saving more plastic from being produced and everything but it's also saving a lot of money those things aren't cheap and you know most people know someone who has a kid and if you're lucky enough that you can pass things about and share it about then you're all saving money um the other sort of one that's a big one for me is clothes you guys have have kids presumably that's why you're here um and you know how quickly they grow like Amelia has these growth spurts like you you can practically see her growing in front of you and you're like how does this not fit you already you wore it twice um so there's so many good clothes out there available and I have a couple beside me because they literally arrived today and I showed Nicola and Karina earlier so um I have a couple of links for some good sites that you might not be aware of already. Um, one of them is called Kidamajig, you know, like Thingamajig, but Kidamajig. Um, and if I can stop sharing, let's show you. Right, okay. Um, for example, this wee jumper, so cute, I love it, is from Jules. So Jules is quite expensive, but it was, let me just double check, it was £6.50. And like, honestly, there's not a mark on it. It looks like it's been washed maybe a couple of times. Absolutely pristine. Um, Christmas t-shirt. Because who doesn't want their kid to be an elf at Christmas? She's going to be adorable. But rather than buying it new from a shop, I mean, that's only going to have been worn once or twice. It was two pounds, you know. Um, and then one more because they're lovely kids shoes this is a controversial one i've discovered people are very oh you can't buy secondhand shoes um but seriously like they don't wear them for very long there is not a mark on them they are like i feel like the label has just been cut off them and they're from ebay so yeah i started off very no my child will only have new and then i caught myself on and thought this is this is daft you know um there's amazing clothes out there there are people who buy all these new things grandparents want to spoil their kids get designer clothes and yeah they're worn a couple of times and they have these whole other lives left in them so i would definitely look at that and secondhand that base another hmm, one potentially but oh i've had some bargains and they're brilliant Sorry, I get really chatty about this. I'll stop talking now. Laura, over to you. <laughs> um, yeah, well, being relatively new to the like eco life, <laughs> wouldn't even know if I'd say that. But um, I obviously then immediately thought, why am I using disposable wipes? As Kathy mentioned before, um, because I'm going to put the whole thing into the the washing machine. So I changed to reusable wipes uh, for the for changing his bum. And then um, I had already actually been using reusable wipes for their face. Now, I don't know if any of you have ever actually wiped a baby wipe over your face, but it stings. <laughs> and I always wondered why my kid was crying every time I wiped their face. It's because it stings like mad. So um, yeah, cloth and water is what I use to wipe them, dirty hands, anything. Um, and my mom's always like, oh, you never have any baby wipes with you when you need it. But I do bring a wee pack, um, bag of already wet wipes that are reusable so um yeah that's definitely one that i think everyone should do there is the the family cloth option but i'm not brave enough to do that yet which is getting rid of toilet paper altogether and using a family cloth situation there 
but um, maybe talk to me in a few months, you know, we might have got down that route, but your husband has to be on board with that one, don't we? Um, yeah, and then the reusable stuff are the secondhand stuff um, as well, as Kathy said, like it's just because it's so much cheaper too, and um, you can get things so much cheaper, but I, there's nothing really else that I currently am doing um, as I'm so new to it, but with being in the cloth community, like a lot of the shops would also sell other things. So there's, there's you know, um, the soap bars that Kathy's talking about and stuff like that. So I will, I will get myself into all those. Um, I just haven't quite yet. Laura, it sounds like you're well on your way though. <laughs> um, okay, right. I think this is like a really, really nice time to um, maybe like wrap things up. So would we, and, and open it up to questions actually, that's what I meant to, meant to say. So thank you so much, Laura and Kathy, like for bringing us along your journey. Um, and like, please, we, we want to now hear from, from everybody else who's on the session. So um, if anyone has any questions, um, we can like get your, your, like you can turn your mics on to ask them if you want to join in, have a bit more of a conversation. And um, so is anybody else maybe like already using reusable nappies? That would be a nice way to start. <laughs> Excellent. So Deborah, your your little one looks quite small. So have, have you been like using the nappies from day one? Oh. Oh, sorry, you're you're just muted there. I'm not very good with Zoom. <laughs> um, this is baby three, so I've been using reusable since he was two days old. Oh. And I had them in the hospital, but I had an emergency C-section, so um, I wasn't able to put them on for the first night and day. So um, once I was able to use my legs and move a bit, I was like, get me that bag, reuse those out. <laughs> yeah. Fantastic. So I was too overwhelmed six years ago when I had my first. I just, all the options, I was like, what's going on? So on my, when he was maybe coming up to two. I had my second, so I said I'd give it a go. So then I used them on him, but not on the newborn, because I was like, I just can't see with all of this. So this time around now, he's the only one in that piece. So I was like, right, we will give it a go. So fantastic. And are you you're finding it? Are you finding it? Yeah, good. I got a loan from the I I'm in the Republic of Ireland. I'm in Galway, so I got a loan from the I um the nappy loan, and um, the Irish nappy loan. So um yeah, good. To get because I have a load of birth to potties that would have been too big for him, so and I bought I shouldn't bought any new nappies. Actually, that's a lie, I did buy some birth to potties, but all the newborn nappies I got were all pre loved, so yeah, and the, the nut loan, so it's Brilliant. good, yeah, it's good to get it because I only done the pocket nappy, so I never had experience with any of the all in ones or the all in two brands, and so it's good to get a variety to see what works. I'm quite liking the all the all in one. <laughs> Brilliant. Um, Heather's actually just commented here saying she's a granny and her daughter uses reusables and loves them. Um, and she buys lots of pre-loved um and pre-loved stuff and it's all good. Um, so yeah, it's 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 trying to do little bits and pieces, isn't it? It's not about everybody doing everything perfectly. And as we've sort of said throughout the throughout the session and. Um, those pre-love websites are class like Kathy those DMs are adorable <laughs> even for other clothes and like not just your nappies and stuff as well so look it's it's really it's really lovely um has anybody other any other questions or them for Laura or Kathy how do you guys um no how do you guys um overcome sort of that impact on your washing machine you guys have sort of talked a little bit about about that and I think we sort of said we'd come back to it so what are sort of the best settings that you guys have sort of trialed to to make sure that you're they're not smelly when they come out or anything like that um I'll go for it Kathy <laughs> um well sort of there are there are sort of rules to a degree with cloth nappies that um, you wash them either at 40 or 60 um, and like I wash them at 60 but it just depends on what you want to do and you have to follow manufacturer guidance and everything but to 
to, to basic to make it basic, you have to put um like a good three quarters full load in when they're wet. So it's pretty much full like when it's dry. And then you bulk it out with like hand towels or something like that if you don't have enough. So um, you know, if you have too few, it's not gonna work. So you don't get agitated properly. So you have to do that. And then um yeah, you just you have to put it on for like a sort of a good two and a half, three hours, but sometimes even longer, just to make sure. Because as I said, I've said to people before, you're essentially washing toilets. So you have to make sure they're getting washed well. Um, and then making sure you've got the right dosage of your detergent can be a bit of a trick, a tricky one. But um, once you get tweak, as Kathy says, you tweak it and you work out what works for you. And if there's any problems like they are smelling or something, there's a fix for it. And someone will advise you on that. Like there's so much help out there. Um, join it, join a cloth nap, nappy group on Facebook if you're not on one or I'm available, Kathy's available, we'll talk to anybody about it. Um, so yeah, um, the, the, when it comes to that and then you just you, ha you hang them out to dry or some can be tumble dried on low but I don't bother with that because I don't want to wreck them. Um, and also you want to be able to possibly use them again um, for another kid, that's why obviously um, you're doing it maybe to save some money too because there's so much cost savings in um, reusable nappies. Do we have time for me to talk a wee bit about the cost savings? Yeah, it would, be, it would actually be really great to hear, please. Um, so I got a wee bit of information from um, the Money Advice Service. And on average, a child from birth to potty training goes through about 4,000 nappy changes. So if you're in disposables, that's 4,000 nappies in a uh, landfill, um, as opposed to 20 nappies that are reusable. So um the cost of that works out roughly depends if you go for brands and disposables or not but either way you're going to be spending in the thousands on disposable nappies um the quote they gave us was 1875 pounds in the lifetime of your child in nappies and that's one child and um, you can easily cut out um yourself for three to four hundred pounds and that's that's probably branded stuff if you got pre-love stuff or the cheaper versions of things you could do it cheaper than that um and then they said laundry costs you know they're estimating well i don't know if it's estimated or it's scientific or not i'm going through what they said actually is about a hundred pounds more than what you would normally spend on laundry so um when you take a lot away it's about 1400 pounds per child that you save doing doing reusable nappies um and the impact on the environment and stuff like that. I think Kathy's looked into that a bit, but when it comes to washing, they, it's pretty negligible, I think, because of um, you're creating less plastic, so you're saving from the environment. And then like, it's not as if you, as I say, you don't tumble dry or anything. So you're not using a whole lot more extra energy when it comes to the washing. Yeah, so on that, I have some wee figures as well. So. Um, this is from one of the websites that I have a link for. I would recommend if you're new or even involved in nappies at all, the nappy lady. Um, so one of the things that I did here whenever I was saying about using reusable nappies, a lot of people are like, oh, but sure, you're just going to end up washing them all the time. So that's using loads of water. It's using loads of energy. How is that good for the environment? Thinking they're being really like, haha, you didn't think of this. Um, they're kind of forgetting the fact that disposable nappies don't just appear in the air, they have to be made. Um, and they use a lot of energy and a lot of water to use them or to make them, sorry. So um, this uh, sort of study that was looking at the comparisons was saying per week, if you're washing your reusable nappies, it's using 220 liters of water. If you're using disposable nappies for one week, it uses 1,550 litres of water. So that's, my maths is apparently still atrocious with baby brain, seven times the amount per week. So even with the washing, it's it's a fraction of the amount that's used to actually make the disposables. Um, and obviously, yeah, the plastic content is... Uh, let me see now I've got so disposables sorry I can't even read my own notes <laughs> um per so it was about 4,000 nappies 
you said, wasn't it, Laura? Um, from birth to being potty trained, if you're in disposables. So that's 29% plastic. Reusables, it's higher than that. It can be up to 50% because of the waterproofing. But you're talking 38 kilograms or one kilogram of plastic. So again, there's a lot less plastic. It's just shocking how much less plastic there is. Um, I think, do I have a photo of that as well? Sorry. Just to really show um, the difference in volume that we're talking, we keep saying these numbers, but let me show. So on the right there, you can see how many nappies you would use as disposables versus reusables. And they're going to sit in your bin for two weeks, stinking. Because a lot of people, most people, I think, possibly, I might be wrong, just put a whole pooey nappy in the bin. You're not supposed to put human feces in the bin. Like, even if you're using disposables, you should be putting that in the loo. That's where it goes. <laughs> so, just, um, so, yeah, I think that's a really shocking photo just to, to show the difference. And if I can go back a slide. Oh, no, I can't. Happy, that's that's sort of... sorry, sorry to cut across you. Um, I, I was actually going to ask um, quickly about how many nappies would you need? Like how many reusables do you need to buy? But I think that image showed like for the thousands that, you know, you would use as disposables and then what it shows there 24 would be maybe recommended. Yeah, they recommend um, sort of 20 to 24. Obviously it depends, like Laura said, it depends how often you want to wash them. Um, I think a lot of companies don't recommend they they sit dirty and wet for too long because that can start to break down the natural fibers. Um, but it depends also on the age of the kid. So and uh, whenever they're newborns, you're changing the nappy 10, 12 times a day sometimes, you know, at the start. So you're gonna need more then. And then as they get older, I think now we do, I think we're like five a day and then one at night something like that so um once they're past the first few months you could probably have like 15 for the day and three four five at night you need to just make sure you have enough to do you the washing day so you're not you know sitting going oh my god all my nappies are wet um but there's really useful links i have some links um for sites that can sort of um, advise you on how many you'll need and what different types and things like that. I just realized I had the picture up the whole time, sorry. <laughs> no, no, don't worry at all. That was really great. Um, okay, do, if, does anyone have any other um, questions or any stories they would like to share? And if not, like, um, Guys, I, I would just like to say a massive thank you um, to, well, to Kathy and Laura um, for speaking today, um, for taking us through your journey. And um, I'd really like, like to thank everybody for joining us. And um, yep, so it was lovely to see some of the comments come through in the chat box. And we really hope you enjoyed the session. Um, we have a couple more coming up. Um, we've got another talk this week on more um, sustainable swaps that you can make. And then next week, we've got a talk from an environmental sand artist and then somebody talking about the like cleaning your beaches and enjoying it too, the kind of the academic approach to it. So um, like it's, it's been really brilliant. Um, and thank you very much. And we will put the recording of the session up on YouTube for any of you that um, want to share it with any friends. So I'll let you all go. Thanks. Mm -hmm.